Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, I, I read uh, hadiths in Sahih Bukhari where uh, it says about uh, snaps like uh, the most heavily punished pe people will be photograph makers. So in this um, where uh, currently where we when where we stay, it's not uh, you know possible to avoid photographs completely because you require photographs for everything. So how can how do we act on these hadiths as well as uh, be sh Sharia compliant? So that's the question that the hadith in Sahih Bukhari that the people who will be punished maximum are the photograph makers. And today in this world, we cannot avoid photography. Therefore, how do we reconcile the hadith? Whether well, there's nothing that you cannot avoid photography, but the interpretation or translation of hadith is wrong. What the hadith says, the person who makes a tasweer, the musawwir, the person who makes a tasweer, he'll be punished. Now, what is the meaning of a tasweer is to be understood. At the time of the Prophet, photography wasn't there. So there's a difference of opinion between the scholars whether the prohibition is on photography or other thing. There's one group of scholars, for example, who say that photography and videography both are haram. For example, Sheikh Nasir al-Albani, he was a great scholar of the last century of Hadith and Muhaddis. He says that still photography and videography both are haram, according to his understanding. The fatwa of Sheikh bin Baz, he says that still photography is haram and videography is permitted. Sheikh Utaymi, his fatwa is that as long as it doesn't go outside the fold of Islam, within the pole of the Islamic Sharia, still photography and videography both are allowed. And all these three great scholars are great scholars, and they are the authentic scholars, alhamdulillah, and respect all. But Allah says in the Quran, first Allah has zikr in Qunat Alamun, in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 43, that ask the person who knows. So these are great scholars of Hadith, but photography is a science, and what they say that since the Prophet said, Tasweer is there, and today in Arabic, for photography also the word tasweer is used. But at the time of the Prophet, photography wasn't there. So what scholars say, because tasweer is mentioned, and today the word tasweer is used, photography, the photography is haram. See, the language keeps on developing. So we have to first try and identify what was prohibited in Islam. That's more important rather than the word, what it meant that time. So since that time photography wasn't there, you cannot say for sure that the word tasweer means photograph. Though today, in Arabic, the word tasweer is for photograph. So many of the words, for example, utilized at one particular time, it keeps on changing by the passage of time. Those scholars who say that photograph is permitted, what they say, that what the prophet prohibited is the hand painting. I'm not talking about those scholars who have gone way away from Quran Hadith. They say that sculpture is allowed and everything. I'm talking about the authentic scholars. There's a difference of opinion among the authentic scholars. What they say, that what the prophet prohibited, what is done by hand, and the hadith says that a person who makes a tasweer, makes a painting, Allah will ask him on the day of judgment that put life into it. But naturally they can't. So making a picture, a painting of these living creatures like animals and human beings is prohibited. What happens in photography is photography is nothing but a reflection which is preserved on paper. Prophet Muhammad he never prevented the sahabas to look in a reflection in the water while combing the hair. He never prohibited them to look in a mirror. So looking in a mirror where reflection is there is not prohibited. In photography, the reflection is preserved. So scholars say that photography per se is not haram. But if you use photography for wrong things, like idol worship is haram, using photography for obscenity, for pornography is haram, using photography making a big blow up of person, like Amitabh Bachchan, Gavaskar, putting in a drawing room, that leads to idol worship is haram. So photography per se is not haram, but using photograph for wrong purposes is haram. So there are scholars, like Sheikh Bin Baz, who say that still photography is haram and videography is prohibited. Now since we are in the field of media, I'm aware that videography, the shooting, is nothing but still photography moving at a speed of 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second. So when you move a still photograph at the speed of 24, 25 frames per second, it becomes motion. So to say that still is haram and moving is permitted, if someone can say that moving is prohibited and still is permitted, it makes sense. If someone says that beer is permitted and whiskey is prohibited, but if someone says whiskey is prohibited and beer is permitted, because whiskey has got more content of alcohol as compared to beer, so if you prohibit beer, but naturally when whiskey becomes prohibited. So with this logic, what I say to permit one thing which is lesser as compared to the thing which is much more higher, so still photography and videography, videography is a higher version, advanced version of still photography. So therefore what I say that these were great scholars, 
But because of the knowledge of science, they may not have referred to a person who is a scientist. I believe more with the fatwa of Sheikh Utaymi, who says that still photography and videography per se is not haram. And he says that on certain occasions which is permitted in Islam, it's allowed. Otherwise, normally making blobs is haram or keeping big blob size photograph of great personalities that leads to, leads to idol worship is haram. So I agree more with scholars like Sheikh Utaymi. So therefore, photography per se is not haram. But using photography for haram purposes is haram. Hope that answers the question, brother.